Hello, today there was a major magnitude 6.7 earthquake near Panama, and we'll also be checking out some volcanoes on the west coast of the United States. Starting over near Panama, there was a magnitude 6.7 today at 11.57 UTC. On the USGS page, there is 127 Did You Feel It responses. I also gave it a maximum shaking intensity of 6. Coming over to the shake map solution, it looks like most of Panama felt at least an MMI of 3.5. So here's a station here in Colombia. We can see the signature of that earthquake coming in at around noon. Here's one more station in Colombia. Here's another station here in Costa Rica. And another one loading. So it doesn't look like stations want to load too easily in this area. Today at 08 UTC, there was a magnitude 4.3 near Redway, California. This had a 33 kilometer depth. Earlier in that area, there was also a magnitude 2.6 just west of that. So I got a couple of stations here loaded on the EH1 and EHZ channels. Here is a station on the PB network or plate boundary network, the borehole network. Here's another one on the PB network. This station has nothing. Now on the USGS event page, there was 52 did you feel it responses and this earthquake did have a shake alert Looks like most of these responses are south here in near Redway Coming over to the shake map solution. It looks like an MMI of 1.5 was felt down to Leightonville So information here for this shake alert It was originally picked up as a magnitude of 4.5 as and it was located more southeast than its final location this was a very strong earthquake in the same location and this system was activated an area like Eureka would have gotten 14 seconds of warning before they had felt shaking Reading 20 seconds and Sacramento 65 seconds coming back to other earthquakes near the geysers yesterday first had a magnitude 3.3 at 235904 and then at 235950 we had a, another magnitude of 3.3 then after both of those quakes, after a couple hours, there was a magnitude 3.2. Interestingly, that smaller earthquake having the strongest MI, 12 felt reports for that 3.2. Now here in this area near the Geysers or Cobb, California, we can see there are lots of seismic stations. Now this is where we inject uh, sewage water into the ground where it creates steam, which we can then drive turbines to create electricity. Now remember over here these stations have these weird DP channels. Weird channels that do not want to load. So I got the DPE channel to load but all of these stations are omitting the last uh, about 20 hours of data. Every single station. Why is that? Why are they omitting the last 20 hours of data? So these are all on the BG network. Coming over to FDSN aptly of course BG means Berkeley Geysers does look like there are some northern california stations nearby oh here we go okay so this is a station just south of most of that activity and we can see quite a few signatures on this graph for the past 24 hours and then interestingly just north of these quakes in clear lake there was a magnitude 1.4 today at 0704 utc we do not normally see earthquakes in clear lake Coming a bit more southeast, we can find a few more earthquakes that have struck away from other quakes for the past 30 days. Here is another one at magnitude 1.3 near Winters. This also struck almost in the middle of Lake Berryessa. It also had a negative 0.4 depth. Coming more east of that quake in Davis, there was a magnitude 1.4. It had an 8.3 kilometer depth, and this was at 0628 today 
course, a few days ago, I did point out these two other quakes near Davis. It is not normal for the Sacramento Valley to have any earthquake epicenters. Let's quickly come up here to Mount Hood and Mount St. Helens and see how they're doing. Or before that, actually, there was a magnitude 1.4 in Southern Oregon, also just says Oregon. This was today at 0137 UTC. Now this is of note because it was near uh, Medford, uh, Grants Pass. This area, as we can see on this map, does not normally see earthquakes. Coming over to Mount Hood, we can see no activity in the past 24 hours. And then up to Mount St. Helens, we have a very small magnitude, 0.1 today at 0134. Mount Rainier up here has a magnitude, 0.4. Alright, there is something interesting here near Mount Hood. Let's go over to the College of DuPage. So this is a view from a satellite. This is shortwave infrared. It is really good at picking up heat signatures. Now, there was this weird flickering heat signature on the coast there. I might go check that out in a second. But here is this signature here, just south of Mount Hood. So coming over to the NASA Firms website, this is basically some more satellites that can pick out uh, heat signatures. And we're looking at heat signatures for the past 24 hours and we can come here just southeast of Mount Hood and there are a few heat signatures. Now this bigger square here when I had checked this site um, about an hour ago this one was not here so that one's newer. Looks like this is right next to Highway 28 Warm Springs Highway. Can't find a city. Yeah so just in the forest here south of Mount Hood. Here is a camera here at Mount Hood, and this will be the last three hours of its data. This is coming from Alert Wildfire, and this does not look like it is a PG&E camera. University of Oregon. It's spinning around, so we could do the past 15 minutes and get a bit more, uh, a couple more frames. Let's see if we can't see it look uh, opposite of the mountain and see some smoke. So yeah, I'm clicking through here. I don't, I don't see any smoke rising anywhere. A lot of fog. So I think the smoke would be down there. Also, it's interesting, this camera is not tilted high enough to actually see all of Mount Hood. So here's a camera in Bend. I doubt it would be able to see that fire, but we'll take a look. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's looking at anything. Today was the Great Shakeout Drill. This is every October 20th. This is a test earthquake drill. It allows you to actually put into place what you would do during an earthquake at that time. Coming over to the NHC, we now have Tropical Storm Roslyn off of the southern Mexican coast. From the NHC, quote, Roslyn is forecast to become a hurricane before it passes near or over the west central coast of Mexico late Saturday and Sunday, accompanied by strong winds and a potentially dangerous storm surge. Interests, interests along the coast of southwestern and west central Mexico should closely monitor the progress of this system. A tropical storm watch has been issued for part of this area and additional hurricane or tropical storm watches could be required tonight or on Friday. Number two, heavy rainfall could lead to a flash flooding and possible landslides in areas of rugged terrain over coastal southwestern Mexico. Thank you for checking out today's video and stay tuned for the next one.